Hey math kids, we're in section um, 10i, and we're talking about the formal definition of independence. And I think we're just going to start right off with the problem. So we're on example 23. And this will be the only example that we do for this part. And it gives us just a few things. Okay, um, it wants us to, there's two parts to it though, but the first one is find P of B. So if I'm drawing A, we have A and B, and so I'm gonna draw a Venn diagram. Call this A, call this B. Now if we wanna find the probability of B, there's two pieces that we need to find. We need to find the intersection of A and B And then we need to find the probability of the intersection of A, um, sorry, of B and not A. Okay, if we add both those together, we get the entire circle. So hopefully that's clear. I'm just gonna do this to make it even more clear. So that blue section is the intersection of B and not A. And then the intersection of A and B is this football section right here. And then if we add those together, we get, the, we get P of B. So to find this, we're actually gonna go back to what we learned on the previous video, and we're gonna use conditional probability. So, can, so from the previous video, we had P of A given, whoops, not that. P of A given B equals P of A intersect B over P of B. We're going to do just a little bit of algebra to bring this up here. And so we end up with P of A given B times P of B equals P of A intersect B. So this is what we're going to use for this part. Now, the first thing is we're given a so we're actually going to swap all of these so we're going to say p of b given a times p of a is equal to the red section okay and so um p we're given this first thing it's one third and then P of A is 2 fifths. And so if we multiply those, we get 2 over 15 for the intersection of B and A. So in other words, this is the red portion on the Venn diagram. Okay. Now if we want to do this situation, we're going to plug it in here. And so it's going to be B given A, uh, not A, which we have that right here. So P of B given not A. And then it's going to be P of not A. Now we weren't given that, but since we know what P of A is, P of not A is just everything that's left over. So it's two-fifths. So this would be 3 fifths, because 3 fifths plus 2 fifths equals 1. And so if we plug those in, it's just 1 fourth times 3 fifths. Okay, we multiply that out, it's 3 twentieths. And that is representing the blue part. Now we just need to add those two answers together. So we have 2 fifteenths plus 3 twentieths on that. And so we need to get uh, common denominators. We want to turn those both into 60. So this one's going to be 4 over 4. This one's going to be 3 over 3. So we end up with 8 sixtieths and 9 sixtieths. 
So we add those together and we get 17 sixtieths for P of B. Okay, so that answered the first part. Now the second part, it says, are A and B independent events justify your answer? Well, there was, we, I have to explain this a little bit before we start it. So if P of B given A is equal to P of B given not A and equal to P of B, then we have independent events. So um, if we look at P of B is equal to, and I'll put a question mark because we don't know if it's equal to, P of B given A. So we come up here. These two. Whoops, not that. So this one, and then the answer we just got this one. So if those are equal to each other, so let's write those down. So this is 17 sixtieths, and P of B given A is one third. Um, those are not equal to each other, so these are not equal to each other, so these are um, not independent events, or you could just say dependent. Okay, if you need additional help, please come to Math Lab. Until then, calculator.